Right, so very well, welcome back. We're in uh, Sandton today, just north of Johannesburg. For this, the latest in the series of New Age Business Briefings brought to you by the SABC and uh, today sponsored by ESCOM. And our guest today is Energy Minister uh, Tina Jomet pedersen But we've also got a guest who's come all the way from the Bahamas, but he's certainly no stranger to the continent and indeed to South Africa. Dr. Miles Monroe, described as an international leader, teacher, consultant, author, life coach, leadership mentor, you name it, you've done it. Dr. Monroe, welcome to South Africa. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you very much, Peter. It's good to be back home. It's good to be back among people who I've been involved with even pre-apartheid. Uh, mm -hmm. I do remember my relationship with South Africa began with a television show. I was privileged to be placed on SABC uh, pre-apartheid uh, uh, change. And I understand that my program came on just after Larry King back then. Right. And so I used to see, receive letters from South Africa wow. of viewers. And I knew nothing about South Africa except, of course, the story of the struggle. And uh, didn't know that uh, when the transformation took place, I would be invited to come uh, to share, not just in the celebration, but to share in some of the transformational changes. And my first contact with South Africa was an invitation to Cape Town to speak to a church there uh, to talk about uh, humanity, the value of humans. And uh, that was my first introduction. Mm -hmm. I remember being taken to one of the uh, isolated camps where there were over, I guess, half a million people. And I remember spending the day there weeping. I cried. I, I don't think too many people understand uh, the tremendous history and the, the conditions uh, that took place in this country and are still uh, trying to survive those things. But I went there and experienced that. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I fell in love with the future of South Africa. I felt that I have a responsibility because it took me so much back to my own history. I was born in 1954 in a country with 98% black people controlled by 4% white people. That was the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And we were that way for 352 years. And so understanding the history of my own country, we just gained majority rule in 1972, in 62 rather, and in 1973 we gained independence. And so we are just 40 years old as a country coming out of a similar history. and. Um, my second invitation to South Africa was by one of the largest churches in Pretoria, uh, pastored by a wonderful pastor. And the church was like 99% white people mm -hmm. in South Africa. And I was the first black speaker to ever, to ever speak in that church. And uh, what happened that day, I think, changed the church. And uh, I remember mounting the stage, and when we were driven to the church grounds right here in Pretoria, there were so many blacks that were on the grounds of the church. They had never been allowed to do that. And uh, walked into the church and the pastor said, my church has changed. <laughs> because the, the blacks who saw me on TV came to the meeting. And so there was the first, it was the first time the church was mixed, where the blacks came in to see me. And the whites, of course, that was their church. And from that day forward, I think there was a tremendous transformation in that church. I became very close to the pastor and really became a part of his, his advisory board. But that's the way I entered this country. And I feel that I have an obligation to South Africa. Uh, this is my, you are like our sister nation uh, from the Caribbean. And uh, we are so proud of the achievements so far. Uh, but I do understand the journey you are on very well, especially in the context of what kind of leadership it's going to take. To, mm. to make this, I'm going to use the, the South African experiment work. Uh, right. The vision of the visionary of this country, uh, I'll never forget, and I'll just comment on this. The, the statement made by the first black president of, the, of South Africa that took root in me was the new South Africa. And that word new is important. Matter of fact, I, I like the word the new age newspaper here because uh, new always means that there was, there, there's an old one somewhere. And so when he said the new South Africa, he was really drawing a line between who we were and who we will become. And that's what leaders do. Visionary leaders always never forget the past, 
but they also paint a picture of the future. And just like, you know, uh, Martin Luther King would have said, uh, I may not get there with you, but I've already seen the land. And I think this is what leaders mm -hmm. do. Leaders are people who live in the future, they visit the present, and they try to convince the present to go to the future. And mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. true visionary leaders do. Mm -hmm. They really don't live in the present. They, they visit the present. They have this life in the future. And with, without those kind of leaders, all you have is managers. And nothing is worse than putting a manager in the position of a leadership uh, power. Because when a manager is in charge, the organization never grows. Mm -hmm. The country never grows. It simply is maintained. Visionary leaders are those uh, they can manage, but they really lead because of vision. Mm. And I see South Africa as being that kind of wonderful country on its way to a great land. All right, so well, we're going to explore that. And also, um, Minister, your journey, I guess, because you said just before uh, the break that uh, you were inspired a little bit uh, by uh, Dr. Monroe in the days that you were fighting for this new South Africa. Just want to tap uh, your thoughts on that, and then let's explore what this leadership is, what, is, what needs to happen in South Africa uh, for us to embrace this opportunity. All of that coming up after this break. And don't forget, you can be part of this conversation as well. Hashtag TNA Biz Brief and at Morning Live SABC. Send us your tweets and we'll put your questions live to our guests and you'll get a real-time answer. Stay with us.